Welcome to Yonsei University and the opening session of the first Global Engagement and Empowerment Forum on Sustainable Development. We have lots more content up ahead today and of course we have many special speakers who are going to color the SDGs for us to help us understand how the interconnectedness requires and demands of us an aligned action. The history of Yonsei shows that social engagement is not new. Rather, it is embedded in the very heart of our foundation. As Yonsei's founders, American and Canadian missionaries, opened an educational institution to teach the poor and cure the diseased, we opened IGE to extend and strengthen its founding spirit by engaging in community and global problems. The forum, the GIF, is a platform for domestic and international cooperation, where the progress on sustainable development is monitored and future plans are proposed. We live in the age of new challenges. Challenges can be as seen as as problems, but at the same time, those challenges can be opportunities. This is the reason why we gather here today. We hope to find ways to solve the problems, to change this world, and to make it better and sustainable. Sustainable development is feasible only if all countries and all stakeholders act in collaboration and in partnership work together to take up challenges and find solutions for our common future. Let's go out and engage and empower others. Good luck and a lot of success. 대한민국 정부는 SDG의 달성을 위해 국제 사회와 협력해 왔고 앞으로도 협력을 확대하고자 합니다. 대한민국은 원조 받던 나라에서 원조 하는 나라로 짧은 기간에 변모했습니다. 그런 대한민국이 개도국들을 지원하는 것은 영광스러운 책임이라고 저는 믿습니다. 대한민국은 이 포럼에서 논의될 인간, 지구, 평화, 번영, 협력의 가치를 새기며 SDG의 달성과 세계의 지속 가능 발전에 함께 하겠습니다. Please welcome the Secretary General of the United Nations. It is clear that uh, globalization, together with technological progress, have allowed us to have uh, uh, an uh, immense increase in uh, wealth, uh, in trade, uh, 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 meaningful improvements in the well-being of the majority of the population in the world. But it is also true that the combination of these two factors has dramatically increased inequality in our world and has left a number of uh, very tough uh, problems to be solved. So we need to make sure that uh, we use this blueprint that the Sustainable Development Goals uh, re represent to make sure that we are able to take full profit of the benefits of globalization and, progressive, uh, and, and technological progress, but at the same time that we are able to uh, eliminate the setbacks that we have uh, been facing in the last decades due to the negative uh, aspects of these same phenomena. And this is why I believe the UN can be a platform in which all key stakeholders, private sector, academia, civil society, governments, international organizations, can join together and discuss how can we make sure when looking at artificial intelligence, when looking at um, uh, um, genetic engineering, that we are able to transform those new tools into tools for the good of humankind and not into threats to our own societies and to our own future. That is why meetings like these are so important. That is why we count on your engagement and your empowerment. So my question is, how can we make good politics to support the SDGs and the climate change actions we need to have? The green economy is today the best economy. 
and uh, those that will not bet in the green economy will probably have a great future. This is a matter for global mobilization, this is a matter for enhanced ambition if we want to have a healthy planet, and this is a battle that is not yet entirely won. And there, the pressure over those that take political decisions is absolutely crucial. Thank you. My appeal to students is to be ahead of professors and the head of ministries of education and ask what is needed to prepare themselves for a world that nobody knows exactly how it will be, which means to give them the tools of reasoning, of adaptation, of uh, um, the capacity to change and to um, use those, th those areas of background um, that allow them to be prepared for whatever future will come for whatever profession will come. Uh, prepare everything for a world we don't know how it will be. Ladies and gentlemen, I was asked to speak about multilateralism in a turbul turbulent world, and uh, I want to make two points right at the beginning. First, which is obvious, that yes, we indeed live in turbulent times, and second, we tend to take multilateralism for granted, whether it's hitting our economies, our societies, or our airplanes, turbulence works always the same way, because it affects everything in its path. It does not matter what we have done to protect ourselves, or how tightly we strapped ourselves in. Once it hits, it's felt by every passenger on the plane, or every member of the society, and we must all come out of it together or not at all. So we need to face a new reality. We no longer live in the world of once-off or standalone crises. And that's why we can no longer rely on once-off or standalone solutions. So the demand for multilateralism will grow, even if some leaders or politicians say otherwise. Because this is not a trend dictated by politics. It's caused by the nature of the world we live in and the kind of turbulences we face. And when it comes to meeting this demand for multilateralism, the United Nations must lead the charge, and that's my second point. We cannot take multilateralism for granted, because if we do, we will fail to take the threats facing it seriously. And then it will be impossible for us to defend against them until it's too late. And the biggest risk of all would be that our world could return to the way it was before 1945, when the United Nations was created, when rules were set by those with the most power and the strongest militaries, when alliances were, were built only on defense and interests and not on progress, when cooperation was used to further individual gains, and when the ambitions and ideologies of some could bring us all to our knees. We must not never allow this. We must stand up. We must speak out, and we must champion multilateralism. Through the means of elections, citizens are communicating to their government that they want less global involvement. So how do you engage the citizens of the country to sort of say, this is something that would benefit you on a domestic level? These people who unfortunately are gaining on popularity and strength and are elected in, in high positions in many countries now have one thing in common that they are good at criticizing what's there, but they are very weak, very bad, and offering an alternative. There is no alternative to a global responsibility to a system which is based on, on global rules. It took us decades to build this system on the ashes after the World War II. The, that, that's why the United Nations was created and the regional organizations, to make sure that we will never ever find ourselves in the situation when individual interests of certain countries will cause a global drama and global tra tragedy on the world. Thank you very much, thank Mr. Miroslav Lajcik. Another round of applause for the President of the UN General Assembly, and thank you for your questions. We believe that the sport and the sport sector at large are a natural partner when it comes to achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal the sport at the service, service of humanity must go hand in hand with the human rights, putting people at the center. We must all understand that the world is changing and we cannot afford for sport to lose its relevance. 
There is no space in the world anymore for lack of transparency, lack of openness, and lack of collective decision-making processes. We must change the way we interact with this planet. Otherwise, in the future, there will be no planet to interact with, at least not the planet as we know it. It is only through open dialogue, sharing, and collaboration that we can put sports and the world back on track. In fact, the SDGs would unlock $12 trillion of economic opportunity and create 380 million jobs by 2030 alone. We have a unique opportunity. And now is not the time to pause. Now is indeed the time to accelerate. In doing this, institutions must be strengthened to allow the rule of law and justice in every system of democracy. Civil society participation must be given credence and recognition in every governmental setup to convey the voice of the people. A system of equity, justice, and fairness is the only way of building a cohesive and problem-free society. Long live sustainable development. Long live Agenda 2030. Thank you.